To add on to our list of selectors, today we're going to be looking at child and descendant selectors. So the first thing we're going to do is actually define how like the scope works for an HTML page. So uh, what I'm going to do is define a parent. So a parent is basically a container, some sort of container that contains or wraps around various HTML elements. So in this case, I'm going to put a header tag as well as a paragraph tag. And I'm going to define this, I, or this div as a parent. And then within the parent tag, they're, they're called child elements. So I'm going to call this ID um, child1 and this ID child2 just to, just to understand, to make you understand how this works. So um, that's within that given scope. However, let's say I wrap this whole div this whole container, this original container, around another div. So I could say this is actually the grand parent, like that. And then if I move this over, so now you can see the scope of that. So although this is a parent tag for these elements, this is actually a parent tag for this element. And then to make it more clear, we could say that this header tag is actually a child of the grandparent, which is a sibling of the parent. So as you can see, although this is a parent tag for these elements, this parent tag is also a child within this grandparent tag. So that's just a, something to point out. It depends on what kind of scope you're looking at. Some elements may be considered child elements or actually parent elements depending on what you're looking at. So our goal today is actually use the child selector and descendant selector, so let's get to that. So let me show you the web page currently. So this is how the website looks. And now uh, my goal is actually to style this element right here. But I don't want to select this element at all. So my goal is to select the H1 tag without selecting all the H1 tags within the grandparent element. So what I could do is define the grandparent ID, so grandparent, and I could select the direct child or the child directly within that scope of the grandparent. We could directly choose that element, which is going to be an H1 tag, and we could style that. So we could give it a background color of blue and then give the color white, just, just to point out the difference. So when I refresh the page, it should look something like this, which selects the H1 tags that are within the scope of the grandparents tag. So basically, I'm selecting elements within this right here. So let me do this, this will actually make sense. So I'm selecting only elements within this scope that have H1 tags. So that means if I add another H1 tag, um, like this, I could say uh, this is another child with H1. You could say like it's a twin or something. I don't know if that's actually correct. Um, notation but since I'm selecting the direct child or children of the grandparent tag all the h1 tags within this given scope will be changed it will not affect this h1 tag because that's in a different scope that's actually a grandchild not a child element when talking about this diff div tag called grandparent so if you refresh the page the element right here is a child of the grandparent. So what I actually did was change the grandparent's background color. So the background color of the grandparent or the overall wrap or overall container of this content is green. And then the first child or within that given scope of the grandparent is going to be, or the H1 tags are going to be blue with the background color blue and the text being white. Now let's say we have an H1 tag that's not within the scope of grandparent. So let's put it outside like this and say uh, this, is, this is outside or something. And my goal is actually choose all the elements within the grandparent tag whose tag is H1. And I want to style all those given elements, not elements outside of this container or this grandparent container. 
So I want to style this one, this one, and this one um, just within that container. So what we can do is actually change this, this sign right here, and get rid of it. And that means we'll choose every H1 element within the scope of the grandparent. So that includes everything, no matter if there is another container wrapping around another H1 tag. It'll choose all the elements, all the descending elements that are H1 tags. So if we refresh the page, we should get that every H1 tag has a background color blue and the color white. So as you can see, the H1 tags have changed with the background color blue within that given scope, which is the grandparent scope, which is where, which is being contained by this green element. And then as you can see, this is another H1 tag. However, it's not within the grandparent element, therefore it's not being styled. And that's what you call a descendant selector. But if you only want the H1 tags within the grandparent uh, scope, but not within another scope contained within the grandparent, then you would have to use a child selector, which directly chooses the child of that scope, as you can see here. So hopefully that's not too confusing. One's just a more generalized case of selecting elements or selecting child elements, and that's the descendant selector, which chooses everything with an H1 tag or any other tag within the scope you define. So if I want to choose all the H1 tags within the grandparent element, I use the descendant selector, which is simply this. You get rid of the direct child selector and use that. But if you want to select only the H1 tags within the scope of the grandparent, so if I do this, if I only want to choose these tags, then all I have to do is use the caret symbol like that or the greater than symbol like that. So hopefully that's not too difficult to understand. We'll move on to more selectors in the future and hopefully this helped you.